Hey, what's up people? My name is Gun Manas and welcome to a new video and today we're gonna talk about whether Ghost of Tsushima can win the Game of the Year award at the Game Awards. And this will be discussed with a guest who is an amazing Twitch streamer and a really good friend of mine, Heal Please Heal. He has played the game and he will be giving his views on what he thinks about the game. Unfortunately, the video that we recorded got freezed and so you won't be able to see our faces. But regardless, the video is still here and uh, you will be able to know what we think of it and what he'll please he'll think of it and whether it can become the game of the year. Well, I'll let the video do its thing. Hi there, how you doing? <laughs> this this is the friend of mine. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I just I just I just see your your you're just questioning you're like oh okay, okay crap. <laughs> this, I question that if he's a friend or not. Um, but uh, I remember the first time uh, Ghost of Tsushima came in E3. I remember how visually appealing it was because it was so shiny. Everything was like if you see that game and any other game like for example Assassin's Creed maybe maybe even Witch Witcher three. Like how they're, you know, um, visually appealing as well. Uh, and uh, how do you compare that with this game? So a, a lot of the games that I played, um, I'm going to be honest with you, visually do not come close to uh, how Ghost Tsushima was. Um, and one of the reasons why is because it just, there's so much happening, but it's so vibrant of an environment that as much as I want to say, yeah, I want to focus on the fighting, it just the environment in itself just kind of takes you away everywhere else. Yeah. And in all reality, like for me, I, I finished the game. I, like I was out from the beginning to end, I finished the game because it's just an amazing game. And for me, the environment for it, like I, I can't tell you how many times I had to go into picture mode to take a picture and just <laughs> to do whatever I had to because in all reality, it was just such a pretty game. And every new place you would go, it would always be somewhat different. And they would use different coloring schematics and they would use very various different, uh, like just how the environment would kind of blend together. Yeah, I mean, it's, as I was talking about like photo mode, it's so interesting because you can change, I think you can change the way uh, the uh, game looks like in terms of how the wind is blowing. I think you can add leaves or something like that. I'm not so oh, exactly yeah. sure, but- oh, you, yeah. you, 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 you can add everything. You can add leaves, wind, time of day, fog. You can add uh, uh, kind of like the border. You can put their mm -hmm. Ghost Tsushima logo on there yeah, as yeah, well yeah. if you wanted to. There's a lot of variant stuff that you can do with the uh, with the photo mode, and that's kind of what it was. Again, this time consuming. It was literally just time, <laughs> just an hour or two just in photo mode to take a picture <laughs> or fifty of them. I don't know, man. But all I know is that it was a good game. But if you if we come towards the story, I think a lot of people talked about how the story was a little bit weak. Uh, as a you know single player story action adventure game if you uh, if you take that uh, because as far as i know the protagonist is supposed to be saving tsushima islands as the mongols are attacking japan i think that's how the yeah. story is but yeah. i think uh, it was a bit weak as as far as i've read the reviews and how people have been talking about and all that stuff like I, I'm not gonna say the story was weak. Like I, I'm not gonna go into like crazy in detail about I need this type of concept in a story. Like for me, the the, the story in itself was more along lines of you're chasing this guy. Obviously, in the beginning, he's extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, as you progress, obviously, the storyline you get stronger. You have to kind of chase him. It kind of it's kind of the, the story is a purpose as to why the world is getting bigger and bigger and bigger for you. So I didn't mind the story that much because it gave purpose to the actions I was doing. Uh, and to be honest with you, even near the end, I, I like with the, the with the little twist, I'm not going to obviously get into mm -hmm. details there because there's people who haven't played it yet. Um, mm -hmm. But even with the storyline and the kind of uh, alterations of what happens in that storyline, just kind of, it, it, it just honestly, it was well done for me. I had no problem with it. I'm not very picky when it comes to storylines. If you give me something <laughs> there that generalizes and, uh, not general, but if you give me something there that uh, precedes the story along and, and, and there's a reason for why I'm doing this and why I'm going there and mm -hmm. why I'm I'm challenged to do this, I, it, you know, it, it, it worked for me and it worked very well. What's actually really really nice about uh, Tsushima, for example, is that every single side mission has a purpose and reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's another thing too, like even with Valhalla, for example, there's a similar concept there where there's a purpose and reasoning behind it as well. Yep. But there's just so mm -hmm. much of it <laughs> that I found myself just primarily doing majority of side missions and being like, you know what? I'm in this bulk area of the map. I need to finish everything in there before going to the main <laughs> mission. Uh, but it's just, it's just ridiculous. Now, one thing I did like that they did with Ghost of Shima is that if you had a very long story arc, like if you're going to the main mission and the next session is just like, 
much longer mm -hmm. they actually uh told you that said like they were like hey listen if you're going now here it's going to be long you know this is going to be a long uh yes. long storyline so they kind of give you that warning as well so like if you don't have enough time they're like hey wait <laughs> do something else if, before going here <laughs> and i like the way that tsushima did their combat system because they kind of took different uh methods of fighting specific styles of mm -hmm. different combat styles uh it just it, the way they did it was a seamless and beautiful i loved it uh assassin's creed is very different that's kind of like a generalized okay this is here's here's weapons you know mm -hmm. bash <laughs> free mm -hmm. feel free to bash your little buttons away yeah uh where tsushima wasn't like that you really had to be patient with it and either had to wait for somebody to attack you or you had to kind of place yourself in a way okay like how am i going to attack this or am i going to deal with these guys attacking me and this guy here um and the cool thing about it is that as long as as the game progressed obviously it got harder and harder and the the foes that you ended up fighting became a lot much more harder as well and that's where you had to really adapt a, a certain fighting style so it wasn't like a, a button mashing style of game it's more along the lines of okay Here's the here's the three people I gotta fight. These two are this style. That guy is this style. Okay, well I gotta switch up to these. Fight these guys first, and switch up to another style to fight this guy. You can fight them in the other styles as well, but you just have a little bit more of a disadvantage with it. And um, but I just I think they did their fighting system very very well. Very different from from Assassin's Creed. Um, I like how it was different. Like you have a different enemy type. Like it's a little bit bigger enemy type, a little bit stronger. Have more has more armor and all that stuff. You have to change your fighting stance. In order to ha yes. deal more damage, which was a pretty yeah. cool thing that they did, and I, I like that you have to change the stances to fight these people. But do you f uh, do you felt at any point that uh, when you're fighting like all these enemies, was it like do you felt like it was repetitive in a way? Like I think I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm I've not played the game. I've only read reviews and only read what people have been saying, and they've been saying like, oh, it it felt a little bit repetitive because the enemy types were all the sim all same. You can use that same argument on a lot of other games, though. Like the the thing is that you can use the, the the same argument on Assassin's Creed games, where a lot of the individuals there are the exact same thing. Like uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, for example. Like oh, yeah. when you're when you're on on islands and you're fighting the the, the, the British, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, the exact same thing over and over again. There's not really <laughs> much of a difference there. Um, even the, this one that I'm doing right now, yeah, there's varying types of, of people you're fighting, but again, it can be very repetitive because it's the exact same people. A lot of games have the exact same people and the exact kind of similar styles. And I'm not going to say it wasn't repetitive. Yeah, there are parts where you're like, oh, I got to fight these guys and I got to fight mm -hmm. these guys. And there, there, there was a repetitive nature to it. But like I said, the methodology of how the combat system was designed... Yeah. added a little bit of a twist to it so mm -hmm. like you you could fight guys and just have for example a different stance that doesn't accommodate how they uh like or their weakness you know what i mean yeah, yeah. or there's different things that you could have utilized to be able to use like the 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 items you had or the special abilities you had mm -hmm. um but that's just yeah that's the, the base of the game you know what i mean like it's there there's going to be that repetitive nature there regardless uh yeah, yeah. but it's just how you really you know how you how you interact and you come forward and you fight and and, and uh, you act on those type of situations in place. Like I, I my biggest thing that I love the most about the game, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but the weather system. Do you know how the oh, weather yes. system changes yeah, with yeah, the why? Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah that I cool. love the most about it. Where <laughs> if you follow the tradition of samurai, the weather is beautiful and kin mm -hmm. and everything. And if you go kind of the sneaky backstabby way, which is very much not samurai, the yes. weather is stormy and dark <laughs> clouds and everything. Like I love that. And it just kind of showcases to you like how your playthrough kind of kind of works. Mm -hmm. So like if you want a challenge, okay, do things the samurai way. Yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. if you want to go around throwing stars at people's faces, you know, do the other way. <laughs> I like stormy that. Stormy as hell. <laughs> I like how you can uh, changes the mood depending upon the playstyle of yours, uh, and yeah. you know it just it just changes everything. You know, as I said, you know having storms and all that stuff, which which I think is a pretty cool addition because again this is a action adventure game. I think one of the things was also there is I think there was an upgradation system to your armor, I believe, on all that stuff. Oh yeah, no, there there, there was there there's there there is an upgrade system to the like, every single armor piece that you would have had. Uh, you could customize how the guy looks as well. Like if you don't, if you have a giant armor piece and you're like, I don't really like the 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 headpiece, you could take the headpiece off or remove the the face part and everything. So like there was customization there for your character, which is kind of cool. And every time you upgraded, like you had 
uh, a different look for your armor. And the cool thing too about your armor appeal too is every single armor would give you some special abilities. So like for example, you had one armor that would open up more of the map whenever you uh, whenever you explored. So if you were in a mood to kind of say, hey, listen, I want to explore this part of the map, you know, you just put that armor on, go there, you exp you expand and explore more of it. Uh, you had armor, other armors that obviously were more beneficial to special skills or or mm -hmm. fighting stances so it's like the, all these armors have their own kind of special skills for me i just like being the tank like i had the i can't remember the armor name unfortunately it was a while ago yeah. but i remember putting on the heavy duty armor that could take a beating go out there and just take a beating unfortunately though mm -hmm. with the difficulty i was playing at because it was the hardest difficulty it really i <laughs> didn't take a beating it, it really <laughs> i really got screwed over regardless <laughs> um but still it was just it's one of these things where I think the game in itself did a tremendous job with a very unique fighting style that brought a different approach to combat systems. Uh, some people may have found it repetitive, but for an individual like myself, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it heavily. One thing we can learn about that, do not play this game in the hardest difficulty level. Understood. We'll, not, we'll play no, it in play, the easiest level. play in the hardest difficulty level, it's fun. Okay. Fine, then, uh, okay, get beaten uh, hardly by all these people. Um, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> but, but if you go back to the story again, uh, uh, we have we have the main character, whose name I almost forgot. Character-wise, uh, I think there was the, the main character had some kind of relationship with his father, I believe, as far as I've seen from the trailer. It, so, it wasn't his father. Uh, he, he, oh, I'm not going to go into, too, I'm not going to delve too deep into the actual story. No, no, but you know, you're not far off. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's a person that took him in as oh, a okay. father figure after mm -hmm. his father had died. Okay. Um, okay. and a certain situation happened is that he felt because obviously as a samurai, there's honor in death as any other, uh, and the way that method of his father died was it, not a dishonorable way, but a, a more of a dishonorable way because he also didn't come and help him. Uh, mm -hmm. when that situation was going down and I think there was some guilt in place for that um, but the individual that that is that you probably see him with or the to the, the trailer mm -hmm. is uh, somebody who took him in I think he was an uncle I'm not really sure I think he was the the the, the brother of the father um, but that's why he took him in as a father figure and and kind of raised him and taught him and everything of that nature uh, he does play a pivotal role in in the story I'm not gonna obviously get into details about it because like mm -hmm. I said for those who haven't played it I don't want to spoil anything uh, but he does play a pivotal role in the story and it's it's a very it's a very interesting ending with it and with mm -hmm. him and I think it, it just kind of everything kind of collides together because of the whole concept of again you're you have you're a samurai Hmm. You're supposed to do things a yeah. certain way. Your character, you, you're it. pretty much pushed yeah. to do things not a non samurai way at times, mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of causes some some issues and 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 uh, problems between you and the uncle, this that, and the other. So again, I'm not going to go into I'm not going to delve too deep into that because I, I don't want to. But regardless, it is like I said, I found it a good story because you had the, the main bad guy there, then you had kind of a, a little bit of a twist there and then it mm. kind of had to go another direction you're like oh my god and the cool <laughs> thing too is there there is an option in place of the game as well oh. that you could have uh one of two different style of endings so oh that's so there are two not, endings then there are two endings they're not really they're not really two endings like, i mean it's it's sort of different it, it, i believe it's a, it's a sort of different thing it's more mm. of like um it's more of like a little cosmetic change in regards to the <laughs> area that you're in after the fact so i'm not going to really go into <laughs> delve too deep in there but People fight for that. I want that cosmetic change, you know? Yeah, I want a that different... cosmetic change. It doesn't do want, anything for you, brother. I, I still want it. Okay. I want it. I want that change. I want the pink tree instead of the yellow tree. <laughs> That's what I want. I want some pink, pink leaves, man. I, I love pink. The most important thing I saw from Ghost of Tsushima trailer was that, that sort of relationship. And I thought like, oh, that's going to be like a very big part of the game. Biggest thing I think this game has, like, if, if, if not anything, that's the biggest thing. Like, oh, this game, if visually best uh, i think one of the yeah, best and, visually looking game of this year to be honest yeah and, and also um, i played it on the ps4 pro mm. no <laughs> issues no no skip frames no stuttering it, it looked clean crisp everything so it's not wasn't even on a pc base it was on ps4 and honestly yeah, yeah. i loved every minute of it yeah i mean yeah that's that's one of the things uh which i i, I really like about ghost of Tsushima is how good it looks the game is uh again this game uh, is very much similar to another game called Sekiro, if you know that game. Uh, Sekiro, which is again based in Japan, and uh, it's but it is very much similar to Dark Souls-ish. So it's it's like oh, uh, very hard boss battles, all that stuff. It's mm. very you know you have to fight, 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 fight. There's no such story as you know as compared to this game. 
be very good at fighting. I have to know when to parry and when to dodge and all that stuff. Uh, they didn't go in that direction somehow uh, well, because they did. They they still did. You still like they, there was still parrying. There was still uh, like you had to identify when you had an unblockable move coming. You had mm. to identify when you had a, a potential blocking blockable move coming. Hit the the block at a certain time to be able to parry. So there yeah, was yeah. still that timing aspect. Yeah, you yeah. still had to be aware of that. Mm. Um, it just maybe not wasn't as as difficult as like a like the Sekiro, Sekiro or, game, or yeah. those other games. Um, but like there there was still that aspect of challenge there in the battles. Yeah, By yeah. the way, in the game, pikemen. I hate the pikemen in the game. I can never ever get their timing right. I hated them. I hate, I, still, I hate any pikemen in any game. I hate the goddamn reach they have. Stop it. Horrible. Enough. <laughs> That's the rage coming out of this guy after playing this That's, game. Yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> enough of these pikemen. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, uh, in some of the action-adventure games that I've seen a little bit, I've played, uh, they have these moments, uh, uh, not, not all action-adventures, but they have some moments where there's going to be like one, two or three maybe boss battles here and there. How is it? Like, is it like a complete one-on-one -on -one boss battles? I don't yes. think so. There's, there is? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. That is, there that is there are moments where you're literally just finding one person and you're going into battle with that one person. So it's uh, like when you when you take over um, or take back like settlements or like little little camps, you you sometimes will have like a little mini boss battle there with the guy uh, or like the head the head mm -hmm. guy. I don't know what the hell they're called. <laughs> um, but then like the the main bosses, they're they're difficult and there are moments of like oh sh like I'm I'm dead again. Great, let's do it again. <laughs> um, like there's one guy that I fought. This was not on stream. This was off stream at that point in time. Mm -hmm. There's one guy that I fought, uh, and I didn't realize he was a boss. And then I just I kind of I activated, and I'm like, great, I can't go back now. Uh, <laughs> I think I died pretty much 21 times because uh, the guy was unbelievably difficult. Um, but you know, you, you do have those boss battles there where it's mm -hmm. a one on one. But it's not like you're fighting a twenty foot monster coming <laughs> at you. It's literally an individual with a samurai sword themselves mm -hmm. or whatever method of uh, style that they have. But yeah, I mean that's not one of those games. It's like, oh, it's a post apocalyptic game. It's, it's just a no, samurai. No, 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 <laughs> it's, no. it's not going to be no. big no, monster. No, it's, it's more along the lines of here's you fighting in a bunch of leaves with another guy <laughs> with has a samurai sword coming at your face. So and, and win a lot of win and win. Yeah, and win <laughs> a lot of win. Jesus, that game has a lot of wins. Uh, but as you said, you were talking about this uh, side missions that the game has, and I think one of the side missions I know, I think it is, uh, you follow the fox. I think that's one of the things as a small yeah, so side mission. Those, yeah, those are those are world events. Uh, world so events, right. you find little world events around. So like you can follow the fox to uh, <laughs> excuse me. You follow the fox to um, uh, a prey totem, and then you mm -hmm. pr you pray to the fox or you pray to the totem there. Um, but you find a lot of those spread out, and the more that you pray, the more you unlock, and you can unlock new skills and stuff like this. There's a couple of those in the world. There's obviously like uh, temples that you have to reach to that are kind of like this little. <laughs> they're at like a high peak <clears throat> and you have to find a way there mm -hmm. you get there and obviously you pray you get whatever some special ability there uh there's just a little a lot of mini little world events like that there's also like uh hidden springs that you can relax in and, uh, and kind of focus on and you know kind of think to yourself and and uh again you get you kind of in, 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 you in, you increase your health when you find one of those there's places where you can sit down and write haikus you know um mm. there's a there's a lot of world events that are placed there but they're not like they're not like world events that take hours they're pretty much little world events yeah, yeah. you get to kind of fall through and just finish them off and mm. it became to a point where whenever i i i, I unlocked another area of the map i'm like all right there's that world event. i gotta do that i gotta <laughs> do that i gotta do that and it became one of these things where you gotta just go to every little spot like right now the game in itself i finish a game I finished a bunch of areas. I have a couple little things to do to 100 percent the game. Oh, and then I'm done. they're still there. <laughs> they're still there. I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I, still, I just I haven't gone back and play it because I know if I go back to play it now because I haven't played it in a while, I'll just get mm. my ass handed to me. <laughs> Literally. Uh, one another innovative thing I found in this game is you don't have like a mini map to guide you. I believe in this game in Ghost of Tsushima, I think you have like you can see the map, but you don't have like a mini map. Oh, this is where. Uh, the next mission is or something like that I feel like is that how it is because I when I was looking at some videos where they were talking about the game they said like oh you need you can use the wind direction uh, to direct yourself yeah to the places. so I can't I, I honestly cannot remember if there's a mini map or no I, I, I cannot for the life of me remember I don't have a UI in front of me but yeah so what happened is when you go to your map and you have uh, 
and indi- like you can indicate somewhere about where you want to go in the map, mm-hmm. and then you come out, then you activate the wind, and the wind is kind of there to guide you. So you pretty much got to follow the wind, and that's yeah. your path where you got to go. Mm-hmm. Thinking about it right now, I don't think that there was a mini map. I think you're right. There wasn't a mini map, yeah. or there was no indicator there as well. I think it was just the wind. Just so the you wind. go to your map, you, you, you uh, find a spot where you want to go, mark the map, and when you go back into the game, activate the wind, and you can it'll tell you where to go. It's just it's one of those indicators. That's why I liked about it. That was very mm-hmm. that was very uh, uh, very new concept that I didn't yes. haven't seen played before. So at least that I've played. You know, some people are like, <laughs> "What are you talking about? It's in this game and this game <laughs> that I've played. I've never had that." So it was good. It was fun. But, one. Yeah, I mean, uh, when uh, the developers were talking about and they made a video about oh no, not video. I think I read an article where it was written like oh there will be no uh, specific waypoints like okay this 100 meters is after where you have to go like it's only 100 meters left or 200 meters left something like that but it will okay, be like yeah. you you can only go to a certain uh location by using your wind and you which which i oh yeah it's all guessing game you have to yeah. just get like you see like up there is where you need to go and you're like how the hell am i gonna get up there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is which is really cool i think that's uh that's that's something that uh, an open world ish game because it's not i think it is it is it is open world but i feel like it's it's one of those things that you find your own way or your own time and your own direction to go uh from one place to the other wherever you want to you know scab and like look around and find uh side missions and stuff like that i just, <laughs> I just went to buildings and it wasn't oh i was like oh and beautiful I, and and you don't even photo mode you, <laughs> and it didn't even open the door you just just went oh no it. i didn't open doors i just i just went through the goddamn doors why do i need to open doors i don't need to open doors <laughs> who needs to open I'm doors do them we need no, to open yeah, doors no, that, and they can that's my way them. of going through doors. So if you want a selling point in this game, you can break doors and go through them. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need to know. They're paper. Cut, like through, the, cut the, your way through. The person in front of you will slide the door and close it and you... Pff, no! Yeah, no, no sliding for me. No, 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 no. That's not how I take doors. And by, by the way, why wouldn't you hold the door for me? Why'd you close the door right in front of me? As I'm trying to follow you into a place, you close the door in front of me. I'm like, well, fit, screw you! I'm opening the door my own way then. <laughs> All right. So, what do you, what do you think? Can this? Uh, I mean, I know that you are not so much into like a game of the year, the awards that the yeah. game gets. But what do you think that is it uh, something that can get game of the year award or something? I, I feel it. I feel it can. Uh, just because of how different it is. Um, like I said, one of the the biggest focal points for it was visually stunning. Um, mm. The game in itself visually had just a remarkable, just remarkable world, a remarkable, colorful, uh, beautiful world. And mm-hmm. as you progress in it, you see the obvious kind of signs of struggle and you see this and you kind of see it change a little bit, too. Whereas in the first little bit is just beautiful, open, just colorful, everything. Yeah. As you progress in the storyline, you see the darkness, you see how it's being affected, you see how it's kind of shifting and altering a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do feel the game in itself has a tremendous amount of potential to be able to win game of the year. Uh, somebody who, like, take it for myself, somebody who is very picky when it comes to games and like being able to go through games and finish mm-hmm. them off. The fact that I went from beginning to end with this game should say just like in regards to just a, a really well designed, put together game, mm-hmm. and it just made it made for an enjoyable experience from beginning to end. And I feel that this has very high potential. And I'm hoping it does very well. Uh, I don't know who it's going against. So I don't know if you know the uh, other games well, are going against uh, them. The, so there's six games. Uh, one of them is this. Then uh, they're going. It's, it's going against Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hades. It's another game, indie game. Uh, we have Last of Us Part Two and your favorite game, Animal Crossing. <laughs> yes. Those are such weird games for Game of the Year. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I, 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 I don't. I don't I, those are like really odd. Jo- like Doom Eternal is just. You go around, you shoot stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think there I, is I'm no other Doom game. Fan, so I actually don't know. I'm not a big Doom fan. Um, but if I if I have to look at an overall game from story, visuals, mechanics, uh, and just overall stability, this game hands down. Like I know you want Animal Crossing to win, <laughs> but no, no, I'm going for this one. I know you and you 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 and your island and giving money to to was a crook. Nook, crook, nook, the crook, or something. I don't know who the characters, man. I don't know, got I, a clue. I don't know all Animal I know Crossing, nook, man. All I know is Nook <laughs> wants your money because he's a crook. 
<laughs> I have no idea about that game. I don't own Nintendo, so I cannot play that game. But no, That's I'm not voting that game. Fuck that game. Uh, but uh, I, the, oh. <laughs> the major. Yeah, I've been uh, all family friendly in this motherfucker. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining. And if you guys haven't followed Heal, please heal. Do follow him. He streams every week. And he's been playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla right now. So do follow him on Twitch. Also follow him on Twitter and Instagram to know more spicy things that he does in life. <laughs> and you will definitely enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of spice in my life, my A lot friend. of spice in there. Yeah, he uh, has a lot of spice in my life. I call them cats. You want to follow <laughs> that on Instagram? Feel free. Feel free to, to follow Instagram. That's it. All the links should yeah. be in the description down below. So check him out. Hit that sub, ding that bell, share with your family, your friends, your uncle, your mother, that guy across the street that sells you really weird muffins. This man deserves it. Do it. I need that muffin man, so please. Do okay. that. Okay. <laughs> Let's listen here, son. <laughs> I don't, I don't.